Okay, so in the last video, we set it up so as that the active character cycles through automatically. So when you press the attack key, currently the number one button, first the witch attacks, and then the uh, bodyguard will attack if you press the number one key again, and then the uh, enemy then counterattacks. Now, eventually, we're going to want to have some kind of indicated to show, okay, she's going first, she's going second, enemies going. Uh, games like Grandia, uh, Neptunia, they'll show like a timeline showing who's going next. Um, or maybe if you just want to show who the current player is, you could do like some kind of highlight. Uh, if you notice, there's no health um, UI right now, so you're not seeing people's health bars. You could have maybe that be highlighted. But again, that, that's getting down the roads. This is the basic functionality. All right, so we see the calculation of damage, but it's not cumulative. No one actually has an amount of health. Now, let's go into some of the scripts. So let's go to Battleflow. We'll zoom in a bit. Again, that's holding the control key and scrolling the uh, scroll wheel forward on the mouse. So in Battleflow, not much going on here. For suit control, that's the bodyguard. So we gave this variable, this static variable, as our hit points. Likewise for which, this static variable are hit, her hit points. In the enemy, we currently are not using a static variable. So these now have to be part of a calculation where they get reduced based on those attacks. Now we already have sections where that damage is calculated. So it's just a matter of adding to that section an actual calculation for the reduction in, in HP. So let's start with the enemy. So this is the enemy's HP, that variable and they are having that HP be reduced whenever the witch attacks or the suit attacks. So that gets done. So current damage. So what we're going to do is this. We need current damage to be reduced from their HP. Because the enemy, because we're not using a static variable, for the moment we would therefore have to have it be done right within this script. So when do we want that to be done? We want that to be done when the attack displays this. That happens in here, because this is where instantiate DM text has. So we're in the suit con and the witch con in the IE numerator return section. As you can see, it's saying instantiate the damage text. So when that gets instantiated, that's for timing and synchronization purposes. That's really where you should see the enemy's hit point be reduced as well. So what we can do is we can create another variable that says, okay, go ahead and display the damage now. So let's do that. So let's go to battle flow, since this isn't going to be associated specifically with any one object. And let's do public static string. And this can be used for a bunch of different things. Um, so let's call this, hmm, let's try damage display. Let's do that for now. And it'll be set to end for now. 
So what we're going to do is in suit and which, when this gets changed to yes, the enemy will check for that, and that's when their HP will be reduced. So we already said, let's make sure I save that. I did not. So we're going to use this variable to determine when the enemy is actually going to lose their hit points. So we already said that this is when the damage text gets displayed. So let's put that variable right in there, the new variable. So damage display, and it'll get set to Y for yes. And then we're just going to copy that. Make sure you save it. And same thing. When the text is getting instantiated, you want that to get set to yes. So now it's pretty simple. We just have to have the enemy check to see if it's set to yes, have the damage get reduced just once, and then set it back to now. So let's put that in update for now. And again, when you build the game, you're gonna have you're gonna find out they're gonna uproot some of this stuff and uh, basically rearrange it. Sometimes you're gonna tweak it, sometimes you're gonna break it, but that's the nature of game development is it's an iterative process. The best you can hope for if you plan it out well is that you come up with a system that scales and you do more bending than breaking. So if battleflow dot damage display equals equals y Now we shouldn't have to do any other kind of check for timing because as we said, we're not having this get set until the damage tech has been instantiated. So if battleflow.damage display is equal to yes, and we're doing this in the enemy con script, then we want enemy HP minus equals. So whatever it's currently equal to, you want to subtract a certain amount from it. And we want to subtract battleflow.currentDamage. So as a quick reminder, we establish that here. But it gets set when the damage is done. So battleflow.currentDamage. Battleflow.currentDamage in the suit in which script when they attack. That actually should do it. Now, what we can then do is we really want to display this variable. I don't want to jump into the UI yet. That's really going to be its own um, tutorial, maybe even a couple tutorials. So for now, we'll just display it in the debug log. And the debug log really is your friend because it's it, it's a great way of testing variables. So debug log. And what do we want to display? We want enemy HP to be displayed. We'll save that. So that's going to show up down here. Now what's going to happen is the witch does, I believe, 80 points of damage. Yes, 80. We can change that if we want to. And the suit does 40. So 80 plus 40 is 120. So what's going to happen is the enemy starts at 100. It's going to go down to 20, and then it's going to go down to negative 20. Obviously, the next step would then be to have the enemy be defeated. So no error messages. And then once the text damage appears, you should see it say 20 down here. Okay. Now, glad that happened. So I made a mistake. So when I wrote this, I said we want it to happen just once and then change. Well, if you notice, that's a really big negative number. So they're happening repeatedly. So what was the mistake I made? I said, okay, damage display set to yes, but I didn't set it to now. So battle flow dot damage display should now be set back to n 
So again, the logic is it's been set to yes because we, we are uh, synchronizing it with the hero's attack. We want it to be subtracted just once, but then it needs to be set back to no so it doesn't keep doing damage. So let's try that again. There we go, positive 20, just like I said. And then we hit the number one key again. And there you go, negative 20. So we are actually very, very close to having, as simplistic as it is, the complete structure of combat because you have the attacks cycling through the players, going to the enemy, and then if the enemy dies, the battle ends. Now, we're not quite there because, like I said, we're going to have multiple enemies eventually. And there's different types of attacks, you know, damage over time and things like that. So there will have to be additional checks to look for that. But the basic structure is almost there. So let's go ahead and have the enemy get destroyed. So what we can do is we can put it right in here. Uh, the only problem is it disappears automatically, or should I say disappears, uh, not automatically, that's not the problem, but disappears instantly because as soon as this gets set, as soon as this gets set to zero or less than zero, which is what we're about to do, suddenly uh, the enemy disappears. Usually there would be like a death sequence or at least a brief pause so that the, the player realizes that the enemy has been defeated. But again, uh, that is, uh, it's an iterative process. So for now, we're just going to say if... enemy HP is less than equal to zero. And if you notice, you don't need the double equal because you have two symbols this time. You have a less than sign and an equal than sign. And then you can just do destroy game object. Now, like I was saying about the issue with a delay, you can put a delay here, but the problem with putting a delay here is this automatically goes into the enemy attack. So we're going to not put a delay. We'll just have it be destroyed immediately. But again, keep in mind, it's an iterative process. We're going to get to that later. So there. There. Gets destroyed. Nothing else happens. Now what you'd want to do is you would then have to have some kind of exit, uh, exiting of the battle. We're not going to do that yet. I'm going to save that towards the end because what I'll do is I'll set up a very basic overworld so that you can show how the randomization of battles occurs, how you're walking around a random number generator determines that yes, you've encountered a, a, a boss battle or not a boss battle, but you've encountered a random battle and then loads in the battle sequence. So for now, we're going to leave it like that, but yes, uh, eventually when we're done, what will happen is you'll have like a, a congratulations, you win the battle, here's the spoils of war, and then you'll load into the overworld just like a regular RPG. So I think that should about do it for this lesson. Um, we didn't put that much into place, but it really does, uh, it, it really puts the basic functionality almost completely into place now as far as cycling through the players and cycling through the enemy, uh, their attack. So, yeah, I think that should do it for now.